The purpose of this film is to put the spotlight on the management of helicopter deck operations on an offshore installation. The film deals with the main elements of how an offshore flight is planned and carried out. In addition, it highlights situations that one must be aware of and situations one must avoid. Section 70 of the Norwegian Ocean Industry Authority's installation regulations describes how the helicopter deck must be managed. It primarily refers to the CAA Norway's regulations. Helicopter deck operations on offshore installations are regulated in the regulations for civil aviation, in regulations on aviation with helicopters, use of offshore helicopter deck. Offshore Norway has published a helicopter deck manual. The purpose of this manual is to ensure common and standardized operation of helicopter decks. The facility must send a helicopter deck report no later than one hour before departure from the land base in the format published in the helicopter deck manual. HLO carries out a survey check of the helicopter deck no later than 20 minutes before arrival. The check consists of a check to make sure that all equipment is working. HLO will check that perimeter lights, floodlights, status lights and obstruction lights work The helideck and the immediate area are free of loose objects. That the windsock is illuminated and rotates easily, as well as assess its condition. That the drain is clean and the drains are open. That collapsible railings have been put down. Check that the landing net is sufficiently tight, if installed. HLO checks that no cranes that can penetrate the 210 degree sector are in motion and informs crane operators via radio or crane alarm. The HLO must check that no vessel is within 500 meters in a 180 degree sector and inform the helicopter of any vessels within 1000 meters. The helicopter deck owner is responsible for filling in the passenger and cargo manifest with content as described in the helicopter deck manual. The HLO must in consultation with the HDA and Fireguard assess special conditions such as difficult weather, heavy load or whether refueling is necessary and any need for additional personnel no later than 20 minutes before landing. HLO reviews the helicopter approach with the helicopter deck crew, distributes tasks, challenges and possible focus areas. In connection with a helicopter flight, the helicopter crew is obliged to plan the flight. This planning must include Check the helideck report Check and assess the weather en route and at the destination, any lightning activity and wave warning A maximum significant wave height of 8 meters during the day and 6 meters at night is permitted Calculate the fuel requirement and notify the operations center of the fuel quantity and any need for the use of an alternative landing site if it is necessary to refuel at the destination, this must be communicated to the helicopter deck crew. Check that the weight and balance on the helicopter are within the helicopter's limitations. In the case shown on the screen, the helicopter is too rear heavy. Solutions are to block a seat on the rear row of seats. The HLO must check that there are no operational restrictions on the helideck that could affect the planned flight. Some helidecks may have turbulence conditions, which mean that there are restrictions on certain approach directions. About 20 minutes before the estimated arrival time, the helicopter will establish contact with the installation's logistics frequency to update position, direction, and speed, weather condition, the movement of the helicopter deck, obstacles in the entry and exit sector within 500 meters, any fuel requirements. About five minutes before landing, the helicopter calls up the helideck and asks for deck clearance. The HLO responds to the helicopter with, the deck is ready, if the helideck is ready for landing. The pilots will prepare for landing on the installation based on the following criteria. Site. Obstacles in 180 degree sector. Obstacles in 210 degree sector. Wind. Movements on the helideck, if the helideck is movable. Sea spray over the helicopter deck. The helicopter deck must be free of obstacles that protrude above the level of the helicopter deck. The sector's horizontal extent is a minimum of 500 meters. Some obstacles are still accepted. These are 
safety curb up to 5 cm, foam monitors up to 25 cm, perimeter lights up to 25 cm, floodlights up to 25 cm, status repeater light up to 25 cm. In this sector there will be obstacles, but in the area closest to the helicopter deck, these obstacles must not be higher than 25 cm. The helicopter deck must have an obstacle-free 180-degree sector perpendicular to the 210-degree sector centerline with a 4 gradient of 5-1 from the outer edge of the safety net, footbridge or cantilever down to the sea surface. Marking must be painted on the helicopter deck showing Name of the installation Weight load the helicopter deck is built for Identification marking shown as a capital H Reference circle for guidance during landing The H value that indicates how big the helicopter deck is in meters Perimeter line showing the helideck's outer limit Chevron showing the helicopter deck's 210 degree obstacle free sector the helideck will be equipped with visual aids to help the pilots make a safe landing. The requirement is that the following equipment must be installed. Wind sock showing the wind conditions on the helicopter deck in both direction and strength. Floodlights that illuminate the helicopter deck when landing in the dark. Perimeter light, which runs along the outer edge of the helicopter deck and shows the extent of the landing area. Obstacle lights, these must be mounted at the highest points on derricks, crane booms, crane housings, on jack-up devices, and other obstacles that pose a risk of flight. Status slash repeater lights must be mounted so that they are visible from all directions of approach and are activated if a situation arises on the helicopter deck that could be dangerous for the helicopter. It is important that lights, which can blind the pilots around and in the immediate vicinity, are dimmed or switched off. The helicopter deck must be surrounded by a safety net that can catch people who fall over the outer edge of the helicopter deck. For those parts of the helideck's perimeter, where other structures provide sufficient protection against falling from the helideck's outer edge, there is no need for a safety net. Helideks that are mounted on floating devices must have a system that monitors the helideck's movement. Helideck movements must be monitored in the following plan. Pitch and roll, movement of the helicopter deck relative to the horizon. Heave amplitude, vertical movement of the helicopter deck. Heave rate, vertical speed of the helicopter deck. When landing in daylight, floodlights must normally be off. When landing in the dark, it is important to dim or switch off all lighting that could blind the pilots during approach. The helicopter always lands with its nose up into the wind and normally comes down to a little above helicopter deck level on the outside of the helicopter deck and then slides in over the deck a 45 degree angle. When the helicopter has landed and the helideck crew has received the go-ahead from the helicopter to deploy the helideck, the HLO will stand in a safe zone in front of the helicopter with eye contact with the pilots and a total overview of the helideck. While the helideck assistant and fire guard will place wheel chocks on the main wheels, set up railings and start unloading luggage. The helideck assistant then opens the cabin door and lets the passengers out, at the same time pointing the way to the fire guard who is standing at the selected descent on the helideck. In front and behind the helicopter, there are dangerous zones where the main or tail rotor poses a danger to personnel. The helicopter deck manual has zone maps for all helicopter types operating in the North Sea. There must be one main access plus at least two other accesses. As far as possible, the access points must be placed 120 degrees in relation to each other. The declines must be marked with exit, which must also be visible at night. The ramps must have signs prohibiting staying on the deck and passenger traffic behind a parked helicopter with the rotor running. The entrances must also be able to be closed physically. The regulations set strict requirements for firefighting equipment on the helicopter deck. The system must consist of three foam monitors or a deck integrated fire extinguishing system with nozzles. In addition, there must be at least two fire hydrants in the immediate vicinity of the helicopter deck and a combined foam slash powder post with dual function for extinguishing smaller fires. In the example shown, three combined foam slash powder posts have been installed, which are two more than the minimum requirement.
When the helicopter takes off from the helideck, it may be exposed to hot exhaust gas from the installation's gas turbines in unfavorable wind direction. If these gases are sucked in, the helicopter's engines will lose power and, in the worst case, stop. It is therefore important to map out the conditions under which this can occur and set restrictions for landing on the helideck when these conditions occur. This is documented by carrying out a survey before the installation is put into use. When the helicopter is fully loaded and all doors and cargo hatches are closed, the HLO receives a signal from the pilot to remove wheel chocks. HLO signals to the helideck assistant and fireguard to remove the wheel chocks. HLO and helideck assistant stand in a safe position outside the helicopter deck. When the fireguard is in position at the operating device of the fire extinguishing equipment, the HLO gives the pilots a thumbs up. The helicopter must be balanced. That is, we must be able to lift the helicopter in the center of the rotor without it being too heavy or too heavy at the back. In addition, the helicopter must not exceed the maximum takeoff weight. The pilots check this before each departure and can adjust the weight and center of gravity by making sure that too much luggage is not loaded and or blocks seats in the cabin. If it is discovered that the helicopter has been overloaded, this will entail an extended check of the helicopter's drive mechanism and structure. The helicopter deck must have an obstacle-free 180-degree sector perpendicular to the 210-degree sector centerline with a fall gradient of 5-1 from the outer edge of the safety net, footbridge or cantilever down to the sea surface. The aviation regulations set performance requirements for the helicopter. The requirement for flying to offshore installations is called PC2E. This requirement describes that there must be enough performance in the helicopter in the event of an engine stoppage to plunge down towards the sea surface to achieve speed and lift without being closer to the sea surface than 35 feet. The term zero drop down means that the helicopter should not lose height during takeoff in the event of an engine failure. The helicopter operator is often required to zero drop down if, during takeoff, he has to fly over obstacles that protrude into the fall gradient in the 180 degree sector. In the example shown, a wave radar penetrates the sector. To meet the requirement for zero drop down, the helicopter must limit the number of passengers and the amount of luggage. After takeoff, it is a good best practice to do a visual inspection of the helideck that there are no visible leaks or foreign elements on the helideck surface. 